Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on communicable disease. Now, what is a communicable disease would be the first question. Communicable is just a fancy way of saying that a disease is infectious, right? So I'm gonna write that here. It's also known as infectious disease. What that means is it can be spread easily from organism to organism. Okay, so if a disease was genetic, for example, that is not a communicable disease because it's one which you inherit. Whereas a communicable disease is one where if you have it, you could pass it on to someone else uh, just by them being close to you, right? And we'll have a look at how that works in a bit more detail later on in this video. But importantly, the things which are spreading this disease are called pathogens. Pathogens, right? Now, a pathogen is basically a microorganism, okay, a microorganism, which enters, which enters the body, okay. Now, the body could be of a human being, but it could be of something else, right? Um, infectious diseases are not only limited to us. They occur and infect all sorts of other organisms, even microorganisms and plants, right? So the organism which is being infected is often called the host organism, right? So I'll put that in brackets there. So a microorganism which enters the body and causes infection. Okay, that's basically what we're talking about. Okay, now what we're gonna do quickly is run through all the different types of pathogens which can cause disease. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at a diagram of each. This first being bacteria. Right, now bacteria are small cells. Okay, so they are small cells around 100 times smaller than a human cell. Okay. Right, what they do is they enter the body, the body, and rapidly multiply. Right, that just means they increase their number quite a lot. So if you start off with a few bacteria inside you, eventually you're gonna have millions of these things inside your body. That's when you start to see the symptoms of a disease. Okay, what they do is they release toxic substances, which uh, damage the cells of our body and therefore cause symptoms okay and some of those can be classed as diseases all right so they release toxic substances which damage the cells of our body and therefore they cause symptoms and disease right they are small cells bacteria are small cells they are actually single celled organisms right i should actually put this here as well okay single celled organisms right and they can enter our body and obviously they can release these substances and that is no good Okay, now bacteria are not the only types of pathogens. There are more. The next one being a virus. Okay, this is a nice cartoon. I say a nice one. This is a cartoon here which looks like the HIV virus. The HIV virus is certainly not a nice virus. Okay, but we'll talk about what a virus is in general because there are many. Okay, viruses first and foremost. Viruses are not. Let me just put that in capitals. Cells. Right, they're very, very small. Okay. Okay. They are around 100 times smaller than bacteria, right? They're even smaller than bacteria, quite a lot smaller than bacteria. They actually aren't classed as cells, okay? They will, though, rapidly reproduce inside the body. A virus will enter our cells. Now, this is a key difference because a bacteria, okay, Bacteria will enter the body, right? And they will maybe uh, they'll maybe live in the bloodstream, or they'll go and live in your stomach, or something like that. Um, but they they won't actually enter our cells. They're too big. Whereas a virus is so small that it can get inside our own cells, right? A bacteria is a cell itself; it doesn't need to. A virus is so small that it can actually enter our cells, and that's how it works, right? What it does is um, the virus will replicate itself using our cells 
machinery, right? And by machinery, let me just put in brackets here, organelles and enzymes, right? Basically, a virus will use the components of our cells in order to reproduce themselves. Okay, they reproduce themselves rapidly and they produce lots of them, right? They produce lots of copies of the virus. Eventually, you have so much of that virus in your cells that the cells will burst, right? So eventually, the virus is present in very high numbers, which causes the host cell to burst, okay? The viruses then enter other cells and repeat the process. Okay, this damage to cells is what causes symptoms of the virus. All right. So a virus will physically enter our cells. They'll reproduce, and then when they um, when, they're, when they're present in too high numbers, the cell can't cope anymore, the cell bursts, the viruses escape, go and infect other cells, and carry on. All right, next we have something called a protist. Okay, now there are lots of different types of protist. All right, but there are a few common features that we need to know. So a protist is a eukaryote. Okay, these are eukaryotic organisms okay for example plants and animals are eukaryotic organisms as you should know and protists are also eukaryotes whereas bacteria are prokaryotes okay however most of them are single celled organisms all right so most of them are single celled organisms but they are eukaryotic okay many of these are parasites which live inside the host organism and cause damage by um, feeding on resources yeah well, I'll say resources I'll say nutrients inside the organism or by releasing toxic substances Okay, all right. Often a protist is transferred by another organism, which is called a vector, right? So often a protist is transferred to the host organism by another organism, which is called a vector. Okay, as an example, and you'll see this in more detail um, in my next video. One example of a protist is something called plasmodium, which causes malaria, right? Now, the malaria plasmodium, that is a parasite, and it causes the disease. But the way you get it is that it's carried inside um, a mosquito, okay? A mosquito carries that organism, and when a mosquito bites you, then it can transfer that organism to your blood, and then you have the disease, Okay. However, the mosquito itself does not have malaria. The mosquito is not affected by the um, by the protist inside it. However, it is called a vector organism. Right, the mosquito is the vector because it transfers the um, the disease or the pathogen, sorry, to the host organism without being infected itself. So that is what we mean by a vector organism. Okay, and like I say, we'll look at more. Um, actual examples in the next video. All right, well, that's protists. Next one is fungi, right? Fungi. Okay, so many fungi are single celled organisms as well. Yep. However, some are made up of a body which has hyphae, right, hyphae. All right, now these hyphae are long projections, right? They're long, thin 
thread-like structures which can actually penetrate into things. That includes human skin, it includes tree barks, it includes all sorts of things. Right, so the hyphae are long thread-like extensions which can penetrate things like human skin and cause disease. All right, what they also produce are things known as spores, and these spores spread to other plants and animals, and then those plants and animals are infected as well. Okay, so spores can also be produced by these hyphae, which allows the fungi to spread to other organisms and also cause disease. All right, lastly, so we, we're gonna have a look now at ways in which pathogens can spread. So how these infections can actually spread. All right, because we've said these diseases are communicable, which means that they can um, be, or they are infectious, they can be spread. The first way is via water, okay? So if you have a contaminated water supply, right, which contains things like bacteria, okay? So bacteria in water supply. If you uh, drink that water, then that bacteria is being transferred into your body and then you can get that disease as a result, okay? Another common way in which pathogens are spread is via the air. Now, a lot of the time, um, things traveling in the air must be lighter. An example of that is a virus, right? So viruses can travel through, that's just bad writing, through the air. Right, if you think about the common cold, right, that's the influenza virus, right? If you sneeze, then there are droplets which just go into the air and the virus is uh, is present in the air. Someone else can breathe that in, that virus is taken in and then you have spread that disease. All right, lastly, it would be direct contact. All right, direct contact. Right, some pathogens can be picked up just by touching a surface, right? That might actually be the skin. Right, if our skin has a fungal infection on it, for example, let's go down, right, fungal infection can be transferred by contact with the skin. Right, if there is a fungal infection on someone's skin, someone else is, if someone else touches um, that part of the skin, then that pathogen can be tran transferred from one person's skin to the other. Right, an example of that is athlete's foot. Right, athlete's foot can be transferred. It's a fungal infection and that can be transferred. Also, the infected person could leave or, or could transfer that fungus to something like a towel or something like a shower floor or something like the floor of a swimming pool, right? And then when someone else uses the towel, etc., etc., then that fungal infection can be transferred as well. Okay, so I think that's enough for now. I'm going to stop there. I hope that has helped you understand what a communicable disease is and what the different types of pathogen are. Now, if you do still have questions, then please feel free to post them in the comment box below or just send me an email using the link and I will get back to you. But as usual, please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out and you will, of course, be notified whenever new videos become available. But thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.